love thrown in this place Fill our hearts with your love Your love surrounds us Your delusion we came To encounter your love Your love surrounds us Spirit of God, all fresh on us, we need your presence. Father, I thank you and I bless you for teaching me how to surrender to the process, how to trust you in the mess, how to just be uh, open to what you have for me and I pray that today's sermon will minister to people like never before because it's a sermon of personal experience and those are the best kind Lord I bless you and I love you and you are God and you are worthy to be praised and there is none like you surround this God and as as I minister your word or the word that you've given me today stretch both your hands through my computer screen heal, restore, deliver and I praise you Father hi guys um, amen Hi guys, uh, thank you for joining me this morning, this afternoon, this evening, where, wherever or whenever you happen to be watching. Um, today's message is complete and utter surrender. It's called complete and utter surrender. Um, and it's funny because when Kat gave me the title next last week uh, not last week this week um and he talked about um talking about surrender um at that time there was there were things going on in my life but not nothing heavy but um soon after that um my equipment broke um, uh, first my door broke down and then my bed rail wouldn't go down down and n now my ch my chair is um, control uh, the mechanism won't work so that my chair works but it it cannot um, I have one of those swing away things for my control and the swing away thing is not working properly so um and as i'm going through all this right now the lord keeps saying surrender 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 and i think that it is um it is key to understand that no matter what we're going through God has it under control and everything we're going through in our lives that's a lesson for us to take other places and he's working everything together for our good now I don't know why this is happening right now but he knows and he knows how he's going to use it in the future he knows where he's taking me to when he knows what um, what is going on and I don't need to worry and and when things happen like that like um, you just tend to say what's going on and, and he's he's saying to us today that he's got it 
he's using all these uh, misadventures for his glory and all we need to do is surrender and trust him and I think surrendering is hard because we like to know what's going on we like control and we like to be aware and we like our our own little worlds to be um, pristine but life is not like that and when it hits us we we have two options we can either beg and roll over or we can stand up and i'm serving the devil notice right now i'm standing up i am not going to roll over i am not going to play dead i am not going to to kowtow to his wishes because god is still on the on the throne and everything that is going on in my life every emotional thing and every physical thing that is going on with my equipment right now is going to be used for my good and it is just it is just a matter of time God is saying to hold on this too shall not only pass but this too will work toward your destiny when you surrender things it's not only just to um to have you take it easy and um to let you breathe but it's also to understand that whatever's going on in your life is just I call it my E True Hollywood story. E True Hollywood story, for those of you who don't know, was a program uh, that would catalog celebrities and they would have their family and friends talking about their early lives and what they used to do. And, and in the, most E True Hollywood stories would start off well, this person was a poor person and whatever. And, and they would go along. And then there would be a point in the story when, that would say they met this producer or they went into the office or they had a defining moment. And then it all turned around. So everything that the Lord is collecting from me right now, every pressure point that he's using every equipment breakdown everything that is going wrong with me emotionally right now every physical demon that I'm battling every emotional demon that I'm battling every spiritual demon that I'm battling it's all part of my E True Hollywood story and one day very soon it's going to turn around and I would say to you all the crap that you're going through everything that the devil is feeding you is all part of your E True Hollywood story and one day it'll turn around it'll turn around it, it'll turn around and all the pieces of your life will come together and you will you will be able to minister you will be able to um, see people clearly because you've been through it and and while you're going through it you don't understand that you think that God is against you but no beloved he's using this he's using this for your destiny as destiny collection so you can minister to other people. You are not going through this for yourself. You are not going through this by yourself. You are going through this because God, first of all, God knows you can handle it. Second of all, God knows how he's going to use it in your, in your life. And he knows what he needs it for. And sometimes when we're going through pressure, 
we don't understand. We're like, why did I get this illness? Why did I get cancer? Why did that person die? Why did that person hurt me like this? Not knowing that it's everything that God is collecting to use later in your life. Maybe you're meant to start a, a cancer thing, a cancer association in that person's name. Maybe you're meant to change the laws when it comes to government funding and getting things covered for people with disabilities. Maybe you're meant to do this, maybe you're meant to do that. All your experiences are for something. They're not just for, oh, I went through that, that's horrible. No, it's for God's glory and he will get the glory from this. And the hot and the more pressure and the more things keep happening to challenge you, the more God sees in you and the more the devil is trying to fight you. But I declare today by the power of the Holy Spirit, we will stand. We will stand. There is nothing that the evil one can do that God is not higher than. He, he, he will fight for us. He is fighting for us. And I, and I rebuke every spirit of darkness that will tell people that this is the end. This is not the end. This is just the middle of my story. This is just the E true Hollywood story. But, but it's going to turn in my favor. It's going to turn in my favor. It's already turning in my favor. And I refuse to lay down and die. I will stand. I will stand. I will stand through whatever happens in my life. I'm standing through whatever financial difficulty I, I've had or will have. I'm standing through whatever equipment difficulty that I'm having. I will stand through it. And if you can stand through it and come out the other side, baby, it's just for your testimony. It's just for, for God to use later. He has a big file of things he's going to use. So when you're going through stuff, take the lesson. Find out what the lesson is from your particular trial, your particular cir circumstance, because there is a lesson. There is a lesson of surrendering and letting God deal with it. There is a lesson, lesson of trusting God. There is a lesson of loving God. Whatever lesson he chooses to teach you. Because every trial, every trial, absolutely every trial is a lesson. And he's teaching us something. He may not take it away. You know, you know how sometimes God doesn't answer our prayers and we are so myopic. We're like, why did you take, why did you take that person? Why didn't you just magically fix my chair? Why did this happen? Because the miracle is in the prayer that he didn't answer. Because he's teaching you. He's going to use it at, a, at another time toward your destiny. He's going to use it. That's why he didn't answer your prayer. That's why you waited so long. Because it wasn't the time. And the thing with human, humans is we're so myopic. We don't see. We only see through a glass dimly. But at the end of it, we'll see everything. We'll see the glory that God made out of, it, out of it. And he's also checking your attitude. He's also checking, well, you're not laying down and dying, but will you fall into old habits? Will you fall into depression? And, and um, I have to say that sometimes I have. 
sometimes I have fallen to the pity party and depression and old habits that I know are not good for me. But I'm saying from the day I'm, I'm giving the devil notice that he will not have my mind, he will not have my spirit, he will not have my soul. I belong to the I belong to the Lord, I am his child, and there is nothing he can do to, to de distract me or detract me from what the Lord has planned. The Lord has got big plans for us. If we can just lay down, if we can just see, lay down and rest in him, and know that he's working things out for our good. It will be so awesome. He's working things out. And he loves us. And he's trying to get us to see who he is. He's trying to see, get us to see that we don't have to work so hard. We can rest in him. And some of us, he, he said, we need to pick it up. We need to start working. We need to start striving. We need to apply for that job. We need to um, ask that girl out. We need to we need to do what he's told us to do for some of us. Some of us he's telling us to rest and some of us he's telling us to move. And we need to have our ears to the ground. Last week I talked about spiritual senses. We need to ask the Lord to open up our spiritual senses to what he's saying, to what he's doing, to what he wants us to do. Because there is so much out there that the Lord wants us to do that we're not even tapping into. We become distracted with our little with our little problems but there's a world out there that needs saving there's a world out there that needs us we have family members that need the lord we need we have we have co-workers that need love we have people that need a shoulder to cry on we need to come out of ourselves and really minister to others and when i say minister I'm, I don't mean preach, I don't mean minister in a church setting. I mean come along to those who are hurting. Come along to those who are, who need us. Because that's what he's given us the church for. That's why he called us the church. Is by we are supposed to go to the hurting. We are supposed to go to the people that really need the Lord and show them the Lord, not preach to them like I said last week, but to be there for them, to just, just be a soft place to fall for them. And some of us that that word is for some of us but for others of us who give and give and give to people for some of us who do that too much he's saying you need to give to yourself you need to give to yourself he's saying stop making sure that every everybody else is all right and your chopped liver, you are not chopped liver. You are just as important as those people. And you need to give to yourself because if you don't give to yourself, if you don't self-love yourself, you'll be no good to anyone. So God is saying to us constant givers, who give until we're worn out to stop and pour some of that love on ourselves. And it's not selfish. It's not selfish. It is necessary. It is necessary. 
Because if you don't give some of that love to yourself, you'll get so drained, so tired, and so depleted that you'll be of no use to anyone, beloved. You won't, you won't be able to carry out his purpose if you're busy helping this person, busy helping that person, busy working, busy with kids, busy with your husband, making sure he has what he needs and you come last. No, no, God is saying you need to pour, pour some of that TLC on yourself. Um, so guys, I want to pray for you right now that God will surround you with his love this week and do what only he can do. Father, I praise you and I worship you in the name of Jesus. You are God and there's none like you. There's none besides you, God. We worship you. We hear your word. We love on you today, Father. We worship you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you, God. And Lord, I pray that your words to your people today have ministered to them in a very special way, have incited them to either rest or work, to either surrender or pick up their cross and follow you. And Lord, I pray that whatever pers whatever people are going through, I pray that you'll open up their divine senses and I pray that you will just speak to them like never before as to what you would have them to do, to do, Lord Jesus. Let them develop a rhythm, Lord Jesus, when it comes to you and when it comes to what you would have them do. Stretch forth your hands, minister to every heart, touch every soul, oh God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Um, I wanted, uh, I would usually end it right now, but I want to talk brief, briefly about finding your rhythm with God. Um, a lot of people say to me, Rachel, how do you seem to be so close with God? How do you seem to hear him so clearly? And I tell them, you need to find your rhythm with God. When I say find your rhythm, you need to you need to source out how he speaks to you. We are God's children, but any anyone who has children, I don't have children, but I do have two nephews, and my two nephews are very different. One of them is very quiet. My nephew Joshua. And one of them is very talkative, my nephew Daniel. And the way I communicate with them is very different. Um, and the Lord with his children communicates differently. So find the way that God communicates with you. And one of the keys I found that's helpful in finding your rhythm with God is write down everything you think he's communicating to you, that you think he's speaking to you on, ev on any subject. It could be as simple as breakfast in the morning. It could be as simple as what clothes you want to wear. Why? Because he will, he will start simple. And then when you grasp, um, that he's talking to you through the simple things, he can reveal bigger and bigger mysteries to you. And, but if you don't grasp the simple things, he's not going to be able to reveal his mysteries to you. Um, when you, um, and then, and then you'll, you'll get 
if he's making, if he mostly, the baseline of how God speaks is usually through his word. Not usually, it's always, the baseline of how God speaks is always through his word. So if it is in the word of God in some uh, shape or form, it is God speaking to you. And if it is not God speaking to you, it's either you speaking to you or the evil one speaking to you. But but when you, once you've got the word of God down, once you've got uh, an understanding of, of the, the Bible, a general understanding, he will begin to expound on that word or, or make, probably make it deeper, not probably. He will make it deeper. He will make it more. Um, he will give you more. But unless you have the basics of the word of God, and it could be just a verse a day, one of the th tools that I find really helpful for me is BibleGateway.com. Um, if you go to BibleGateway.com, it has a uh, verse of the day. If you put your email there and you sign up for the verse of the day, every day you get a verse and then from that verse you can either pray it or meditate on it and when you meditate on a verse of scripture just a verse of scripture your knowledge of the word becomes more and more and more and more until you can understand um, a scripture sometimes People think, oh, oh, the Bible is so daunting, it's 66 books. You don't even have to start with reading a chapter. Start with reading a verse and meditating and praying and writing things down having to do with that ver verse. And there are Bible studies. Uh, there are a lot of things to get you connected. So... Pray about it and find out where the Lord is leading you. There is always a way to find out how God, um, what God is saying in his word that fits your life. With technology now, there are all kinds of different ways. So, once you get the jumping point off, off point of his word, he will begin to deepen your knowledge and you'll begin to hear him like that and your spiritual muscles will begin to develop. It's just like your physical muscles. If you don't work out, um, they'll atrophy and you, you won't use them. But the more you work out, is, is the more your spiritual muscles will grow. And you'll get glutes and abs and all that. And sometimes, when you're first starting, it will be a drag. It will be like, oh my God, I have to research this verse again or what, whatever trapped he has you going on to learn his word. But the more you do it, it'll become a second nature. And even if it's just once a week for 10 minutes or five minutes, that's good. So whatever you can do, and God will work with you. He knows your personality type. He knows what to do um, to get you more into him. He, he just wants your willingness. He wants you to say, Lord, I am. Lord, here I am. I want to learn. And he will put people in your life sometimes to help you learn. He will put pastors and preachers and teachers in your life to help you learn.
his word and how he speaks and then what once you learn it it'll become second nature he will be speaking to you all the time and you'll and you'll know it because you have you will have developed your spiritual muscles so guys thank you so much for today um Thank you so much for listening to me, for being encouraged by, by the word that God has put in me. Thank you. It just really does my heart well. God bless you. I surrender all. Bye guys, see you next week. Never be afraid to surrender because God's got your back. God bless.